Hi everyone. Sorry for the little bit of delay there. I'm on my phone again instead of the computer and I will be using my phone today <clears throat> and probably using my new computer tomorrow. Come here, Pippa. How's everyone post Mother's Day? <laughs> it is Monday. Um, I don't know what the date is. Maybe it's May 10th, I'm thinking, or May 11th. It's May 11th. Hi, everybody. I hope you had a great Mother's Day. We're in the book of Genesis, and you know we're already in chapter 19. Um, after 39 days of this, we are on day 40. Can you even believe this? Day 40 of our everyday devotional at eight o'clock while we're staying in place hey we you know get up and we get in the word <clears throat> so here we are um yesterday was just phenomenal the study that we did if you want to go back to it any that you've missed it's just so good yesterday was all about intercession and prayer points and wow so good so, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Christine. Hi. I, I don't know who else is on here, but thank you for joining me. Um, <clears throat> so, chapter 19 is a little disappointing. And like so much of what we've been reading in Genesis, I mean, I never would have planned this. I had no idea that when I got this book... Um, being the latest translation of the Passion Translation, the latest book that they were able to translate. I just didn't know it was going to parallel our time so much, but it's paralleling, paralleling, paralleling. <laughs> Yesterday was so good. Oh my gosh. If you pray at all and you want to save $50 on an inner session or intercessions how to from somebody just go on yesterday's <laughs> post and learn about prayer because it was all right there in the word it was right there it was so good thank you penny so um <clears throat> i'm just saying <clears throat> all we have to do is open up the bible and it will teach us how to do stuff and how to be and how to live and how to think and how to pray. Come on. <laughs> so, so I have on a shirt that I haven't worn in about, I don't know, a year or two or three, but it's like my happy shirt. I love this shirt because of the birds. I think I'm a bird lover. I think I really am. I just love birds. So here's some birds up in the top flitting away. And, um, I can see some people on here now, so I want to say hello before I go any further. I see, I, I, <laughs> I feel like that um, show, but none of you are old enough to remember this. I see Michelle. I <laughs> remember that kid's show. Who was that? Um, not, uh, I don't know. I forget her name, but she was so fun. I loved her. What was that lady's name? She'd say, oh, she had like this little, it was in Romper Room, I think. She had this little like glass mirror or glass that she could say. And Hobo Kelly. Who knows Hobo Kelly besides me? <laughs> I grew up with Hobo Kelly. Okay, hi, Christine. I saw that you were on here. And hi, Sonny, all the way from Hawaii. I love knowing somebody in Hawaii. <laughs> And my sister, Gail, who went to lunch with us yesterday and was brave and tried a new place, and we actually got to sit in the restaurant. Okay, call us progressive. <laughs> it's like the only one open here <laughs> in our whole town. <clears throat> and because there was nobody there, we decided we could sit in that corner. The kids were brave. All right, um, who else is on here? I don't know if you guys stay or if you hop off, but it's nice that you even hop on at all. Mary Lou. Yes, Abraham taught us how to pray. So good. And 
Oh, the question marks were for Hobo Kelly, I bet. Romper Room. <laughs> so welcome to Romper Room. <laughs> Hobo Kelly, I see you. Okay, I better read the Bible before I get in trouble here. Okay, here is chapter 19. And as I said in the beginning of this, this is a disappointing chapter. Let's read, shall we? We're not going very far today in this. Because I think the next few days are kind of kind of be brutal. So go back to yesterday's to get encouraged. And today's you're just going to have to get through it with me. Okay. <laughs> that evening, the two angels came to Sodom while Lot was sitting at the city's gateway. When Lot saw them, he got up to meet them and bowed with his face to the ground. So Lot knew who these two were. They were angels. He said, Please, my lords, come to your servant's house to spend the night and wash your feet. It's all these feet washing. <laughs> Every time they go somewhere, they have to wash their feet. Because they're walking in the dirt. So, But it's really kind, isn't it? Come in and spend the night and wash your feet. Yeah. Then you can rise early and go on your way. <clears throat> no, they answered. We will be fine to spend the night in the town square. These angels were there on assignment. Believe you me. So they said, no, we'll be fine to spend the night in the town square. And usually... <clears throat> the, it says in verse 1 that the city gateway usually consisted of towers, guard rooms, and a meeting area where people could sit. <clears throat> that is so cool. They were so developed, what they did. Often the city leadership would conduct meetings there. That is so awesome. Recent archaeological discoveries at Tel Dan revealed a stone bench that was 15 feet long, connected to the wall of one of its towers. <clears throat> okay, so that's kind of the setting, you know, that they're walking into. Um, but Lot was so insistent, verse 3, they finally agreed to go into his house. So I learn here, what about you? I learn that you can be insistent. Human being to angel, human being to God, as we learned yesterday insistent we don't think of ourselves in that posture but we can be insistent now the thing is we have to realize that god knows what's best period you can be insistent as a human being who is in covenant with god you can keep telling him over and over what you want or what you need but he will have the final word yesterday we saw plans change in the creative way that Abraham implored the Lord six times. And today um, we're going to see that the angels also, quote unquote, changed their minds and end up staying with Lot. And he was insistent. Now just um, put that away in your memory today for how you might be thinking that you've prayed too much about a situation or a person. Rise up and become insistent till you get an answer. Okay, Lot had unleavened bread, baked bread, bread baked <laughs> for them, and prepared a feast. Man, these guys ate a lot of bread, and they ate. But before they retired for the night, this is the part I was trying to avoid. This part is sickening. Ugh. But it's in the Bible. Okay, the men of the city, men young and old from every part of the city of Sodom to the last man surrounded Lot's house. What? So every man in, in the city of Sodom came out and surrounded Lot's house. For what reason? Well, it is not good. They shouted out to Lot. Where are the men who came to your house tonight? Where are the men that came to your house tonight? Bring them out to us so that we can have sex with them. What? <laughs> what? 
what? Okay, pause. This shows you right here the state of the city. What in the world? Why in the world would you come out at night? The entire male population of this city come out to a house who was housing two strangers. Who knows how the word got out so quickly. And the first thing you want to do is inquire if you can have a non-heterosexual relationship with a perfect stranger and all of you all at once. So, <clears throat> I hate to say this, but there are, th this is what's going on today. Whether it's online, the pornography that's online, that has completely messed up a generation, that has completely grabbed a hold of people that we love, <laughs> that we've probably had to wrestle down ourselves at some point in our life. There, this kind of junk, C-R-A-P, is going on with trafficking at the Super Bowl game. <clears throat> I hate that. I hate that people gather for these gigantic sports events and that happens to be where all of the pimps or whomever you want to call them nowadays, trafficking heads, bring these young women and men into those cities so that the men of the city can come basically and beat down the door and ask if they can have sex with them. What in the world is going on here? <sighs> Lot went outside, shutting the door behind him and said to them, No! N-O spells no, get out of here. My brothers, I beg you, don't sink to such depravity. Look, I have two virgin daughters. Lot, you're going the wrong way with this thought, but we'll just keep reading. I have two virgin daughters. I'll bring them out to you. You can do with them as you please. What? Only don't do anything to these men, for they are my guests in my house. And besides, they're angels. Hello. Oh. <laughs> I'm just like, get me through this, God. Okay, so, why in the world did he offer his two virgin daughters? I don't know, is that called peer pressure? Is that called uh, being sucked up into your current culture? Um, is that, what is that today? You can have my kid. Well, there's a thought. You can have my child. No. N O No No Get out of my way they said Get out of our way They're going to push their way into his house they're going to push their way into your house I'm sorry but the parallel is so real to me I have tears in my eyes because these, this wickedness, this spirit is pushing its way into our houses. And by gum, you better stand up and say no. This guy comes as a foreigner to live among us, and now he dares to judge us. We inflict more harm on you. We will inflict more harm on you than on them. Now I'm threatening Lot. They're threatening to harm him. This sounds like, you know, what is happening today.
if you don't do what we say, we're going to restrict you over here and restrict you over there, and you might never see your kids again the way that you've seen them before because we're going to change things if you don't wake up. We're going to keep pounding on your door and pounding on your door. We might knock your door down with our cultural ideals and the things that we think ought to be the way that we think it ought to be in our country. If you don't wake up, This guy comes as a foreigner. Yes, we are aliens and foreigners in this land, journeying and sojourning through. This is not our home, but we live here. This guy comes as a foreigner to live among us. <clears throat> now he dares to judge us. We'll inflict more harm on you than on them. Wow, they had a, oh my gosh, the pride. Just then, they lunged at Lot and tried to break down the door. Who's inside of your door that's going to protect you? Who's the guest at your house, and who has the power to execute at a time such as this? Who have you set up as lord of your household and your family? Just then they lunged at Lot and tried to break down the door, but the two angels reached out, and you know what they did? They pulled Lot safely back into the house and bolted the door. Do you have these safety measures set up in your home? They struck the men outside the house, young, old, young and old. It's disgusting. Young and old, they struck them with one blazing flash. That's all it took. One blazing flash of light. And they couldn't find the door. It's as if they went blind, actually. I think that is amazing. <laughs> So, that's what you want to ask God to do. That's what you want to ask God to do. God, shut the door to this, uh, the, the way that the culture is trying to grab a hold of my kids, my virgin daughters, and bolt the door, and we're going to yell, no, don't sink to such depravity. Stand up and use your mouth. Then the visitors said to Lot, the angels, the two that had bolted the door, who else lives here? Do you have any other family here? Do you have any other sons or daughters? Well, he just said he had two daughters. Sons-in-laws or daughters-in-law who live in Sodom, in this area, <clears throat> get them out, all of them, out of the city, because we're about to destroy this place. A tremendous outcry against the people has come before Yahweh, and he has sent us here to destroy it. Well, I told you in the beginning these two guys were on a mission when they were invited into the household. I think they knew better and wanted to stay in the square, but Lot insisted, and he had them come in, and you know, that might not have been exactly what they thought they were needing to do, but that's what God allowed. And the encounter strengthened Lot, I hope. Um, gave him some understanding, gave him some protection, made the whole thing real to him, and it was recorded for us <clears throat> so that we could um, have understanding for our lives today. What do you think? I'm going to stop here. I know it's like on a cliffhanger, but I just want to invite you, you know, as we leave these devotions daily, I try to think, or I don't think of something, I think God tells me to invite you <clears throat> to use your no today, and however you can rise up as a community, 
Yesterday we had the most beautiful time of intercession and we were going to see something turn around major today by today and I'm just waiting to hear the turnaround and in the meanwhile I just invite you to use your no uh, your no to the depravity yeah you can be kind you can be merciful but you have we have to also rise up and give our no's let me just see here what people are saying because I am on my phone and I can't see these comments um, as as if I were on the computer. They just kind of run, run through. So um, just hello to everyone. <clears throat> yeah, very hard to see that Lot was willing to give his own daughters up. Yes, and the love Abraham had for Lot was incredible. And how sick, yeah, much like today, and how God is grieving. Hi, Barbara, so good. Um, yes, because of Abraham, God was willing to save Lot, yes. Yeah, and they sell their children into sex slavery, yeah. I didn't even bring that up, but it's true, it's happening. We need to reach those people. Those are the, the moms and the dads that don't understand that God wants to provide for them or that God has a better way for them to live than to fall into this. Um, yes, God does give us over and over and over chances. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Someone's son is turning around for Jesus, Gail said. That's good. That's good. Yes, it is. All right. Well, I just wanted to tell you that it doesn't end here. This is not the end of the story. But what we take away from the story is the recognition coming out of, you know, maybe any bubble we're living in and the recognition of things not being as they ought to be. And what can we do and how can we respond, right? So I don't need my glasses anymore. I'm not reading. <clears throat> Father God, I thank you, Jesus, that you are here with us today. And as we read this portion of your word, it, it turns our stomach to think about the wickedness and the evil and the power of sin to overthrow and destroy people's lives. That literally you have destroyed a city coming up in the word due to, you've had to dis, just destroy it due to the evil and wickedness and the sin that was so, people were just running after it, entertaining it. Um, like a cancer. Lord, we just thank you that you can one by one clean us up, wash us, give us renewed minds, the mind of Christ, give us uh, the every part of our bodies over, given over to you. Nothing, nothing to be given over to sin. Lord, we see our bodies as the temple of the Holy Spirit, and we welcome you, Holy Spirit, to reside in this temple. <clears throat> and we, we pray that you would be comfortable here. We pray that you would be welcomed, feel welcomed here. We pray that you would um, be happy and um, fully you inside of our temple, this temple you've made us to be. We pray that you could fully express yourself through our eyes, through our mouths, through our hands and our feet, every place that we go, through everything that you've made us to be, Lord. We want to invite you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you, and we ask, Lord, that the purity and the purification of your word would go deep into our family line, into our families today, 
we release this purification into our families, into our family line, into the, the ones coming after us. We release a purification, Lord. In Jesus' name. All right. Okay, well, <laughs> better day tomorrow, right? This is day 40. So I, I'm surprised that day 40 brought this kind of a message. I love you guys. And day 40 is the end of a test. Is that right? Maybe tomorrow there's some sort of release that we're going to see. Okay. Have a great day. Maybe for you, like me, it's back to work day. <laughs> I loved the weekend. <laughs> okay, bye.